gather round the fire, for there's a new tale to be told. This is Hearthstone at BlizzCon! The jungle giants have done their part. They have gone at nine and zero in the dungeon run. Now, the Grime, uh, the Grime Street Grifters, sorry, have to go 9-0 to make the win. So what's gonna happen here is they're gonna play out this dungeon run that we've just seen the jungle giants do. If they go 9-0, they move forward because they were second place. Exactly, yeah. The tie goes to the higher team in the original standings from day one, which in this case is the Grime Street Grifters. The tie is the best they can achieve because the Giants did pick up the 9-0. and zero. But if you're wondering what on earth we're talking about, here you go. Dungeon Run is going to be the new single-player content coming out with the uh, new expansion next month. You take on a series of single-player bosses in a roguelike format, adding cards and treasures to your deck as you go along. The team that beats the most of those bosses wins, with each player taking on a maximum of three each for a total of nine. Yeah, we saw it played out uh, pretty quickly as uh, the previous team did very well with a 9-0. So the, um, the, it, the, just to know, the dungeon run is an, uh, I think, eight boss maximum, and we only yeah. see the first three. And obviously, they get harder as they go. I am reliably informed by people who've played more of this than me that some combinations of certain decks versus certain bosses that you can run into are actually quite difficult. I sat there for 45 minutes yesterday, and it was pretty free, over and over <laughs> and over. So Subtle, I, yet again, taking an opportunity to brag. I am expecting a 9-0 on the backside. I think it would be a little bit embarrassing if we were to lose to one of these bosses, but hey, if it's going to happen to anyone, it's going to happen to Reynad, right? It is, and speaking of Reynad, let's welcome the Grime Street Grifters onto the stage. Our next challenges are the Grime Street Grifters! I'm Kronich. I'm Patra. And I'm Raina. And we are the Grime, Grime Street, Street Grifters. Grifters. They love me hanging out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I've known Kronich and Patra for a pretty long time at this point. Uh, I think they're both excellent players. Kronich has been in two plus cons. So he's like a really strong competitive player. Reynad is, he's, he's like a leader. I think we have like some kind of good teamwork. You know, really as far as team synergy, we all kind of, kind of come from all walks of life. I think the only thing we really have in common is that we're easily the best looking team. <laughs> but I think uh, the strong players will be fine. I could be BlizzCon champion here, so it'll be, it'll be juicy. We're going to win this for Kranich. He deserves this one. We're the Grime Street Grifters, and we're grifting our way to the top. <laughs> the Grime Street Grifters! Here we go. So welcome the Grime Street Grifters to the stage. Patra, be careful. Those are pretty steep steps, but <laughs> led by Patra, and then followed by Mr. Reynard himself. And then the guy who's so used to this stage, it's unbelievable. It's Kranich. They're standing by with TJ on the stage. Thanks, guys. I'm joined by the Grime Street Grifters on stage, and you guys just found out moments ago that you'll be playing in the dungeon run for this mysterious challenge. Rainad, have you gotten a chance to play the demo yet? Have you ever even seen the dungeon run before? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> so what did you think when they told you that that was going to be the mysterious challenge today? Didn't really matter. You know, whatever it was, we were up for it. We think we're going to win this thing, so we're going to do it. Awesome. And Patra, um, your, your opponents over there in this match, they got a perfect score, nine out of nine bosses. Does that make you nervous at all that you guys have to get a perfect score to beat them? Yeah, a little bit, but um, usually the AI is easy, but sometimes you can like get unlucky, so it just would suck if we lost to an AI. <laughs> that, I can imagine that. And Kranich on the end there, this is your third time on the big BlizzCon stage here. I know we've said it a lot, but what would, what would it mean to you to kill all of these artificial intelligent bosses? <laughs> well, it'd be kind of challenging, but like, I'm pretty sure that we're, go we're going to do it well. And also, we just beat him like, yesterday, and it will be another chance. All right, well, you heard it here. He wants to beat him. He beat him yesterday. Can they do it again? Let's go ahead and send it back over to the desk to get started with the dungeon run. Players are ready to go. I think a little bit nervous. And what is going to be very important here is this is effectively sudden death. 
yes. for this team because they have to go 9-0 to win. If they take a loss, we are cutting them short. Kranich might not even get to play. Yeah, I mean, this is a Kranich is very used to BlizzCon stage time. He said it would be great, you know, after multiple attempts in the past to actually get a BlizzCon championship. Well, he might not even get the amount of stage time that he's expecting if they lose early in this one. Yeah, and we saw again that just to remind you that yeah, this team also was not aware. They were locked away and hidden in a cupboard somewhere whilst the first team played on stage. So they are not aware of what this dungeon run is. They're about to find out. This, is, this seems like a boss. Yeah. I think we still hit play here. I don't think we need to wait seven seconds here. I think yep. it's like after we see what clock. Yeah, hit it. Oh, I see, I so see. So we yeah. have to wait here a bit and then... What do, mage? What? I, I think priest. I think mage. Mage is good too. Mage is easy. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Or yeah. should we save mage? Since mage is OP, should we play it later? And just uh, Do we play all the classes? That Maybe do we do the like, crappy warrior first? Wait, are you sure we play all of them? Don't we commit oh, to Oh, okay, class? let's just do mage. Mage yeah. should be good, right? Uh -huh. why, why do you think we play all three classes, dude? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, I don't know either. Let's no, do mage. no one knows. Maybe right? just commit to one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wouldn't matter, so. Mage should be good. Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, it looks like this could be a tough one for the Grime Seed Grifters <laughs> as they don't know the rules of the match. So, indeed, yes, team, you cannot hear me, but each one of you will be effectively playing out one Ooh, class. Correct. They have to get the nine wins, just in case you guys at home were as confused as the Grifters seem to be. Interesting, because uh, from my experience, uh, Priest and Warrior actually seem significantly stronger than Mage in this dungeon run, whereas Patra straight away was like, hey, Mage is OP, should we just play Mage? I think it's um, uh, almost the arena mindset and even the yeah. fact that Mage has a typically just straightforward, powerful stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Fireball, mm -hmm. good card. And, and But like you said, they don't actually understand. I played Mage uh, in, my, in my go at the dungeon run, and it was actually... Um, Actually a little bit tough. You, uh, you came up against this giant rat and up first, if I remember rightly. I and I believe you were uh, one Twilight Flamecaller top deck away from <laughs> losing to the giant rat. <laughs> Don't recall that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I believed in the heart of the cards and yeah. I was rewarded. And that's you all go. you really need to do to get ahead in this game. Let's listen to the Grime Seat Grifters to find out what they think so far of the giant rat. Oh. It's going it's to be, be a tough run. It's a cute guy. I think we play Apprentice. Yeah. Uh, and then I think we also play m missiles. So you're going to play apprentice and the missiles? I think so. Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter. It should be like, also, yeah, okay. Because we could just do nothing. I mean, I, you know, I'm up for either play, so. I'm actually fine with doing nothing. All right, let's pass back then. Good? You guys good with that? What do you think, Kranich? I'm, I'm actually fine to keep it. Yeah, okay, okay. Then keep it. Only if you guys agree. Okay. Because this is going to kill everything anyways. I mean, only if he commits to that play. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, this is perfect. We just save our arcane oh. missiles for something else. Yep. Uh, well. No. Uh, yeah, I think it's lethal, right? Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, good call. Good call. <laughs> that was, uh, don't start with fireball. Start with missiles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it's lethal no matter what, but yeah. Nice catch, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even... Okay, well, Kranich with the big spots there of, oh, the boss has 10 health. This looks like lethal either way. So Gramsci Grifters take the win. We can find out what treasures they're going to pick. Least here. Choose a treasure. Passive, double your starting health. I like the tome. At the, At the start, start of the game, game plays three. through random secret. Yeah, it seems really good. It's uh, the only value one. Uh huh. Yeah. Enemy miss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. I. Sure. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Mysterious tome. We're not really a tempo deck, so I don't think the tempos want to be good. Choose so, your loot. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first uh, one seems like. Double ice block. Polymer? Molten giant? Look at that. What is well, AI going to do against that? I mean, maybe it's bad. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's probably yeah, bad. I don't like the molten giant. So this I one, I think. Well, let's think about it for a second. Because I, I think the the heroic power one's pretty heroic good. Heroic power seems like a value, value set, and then. Oh, Nexus Champion Sarad. And just getting removal is good, though. Like, we don't have solid removal. Wait, right. yeah, we don't have any removals except for 
Fireball and right. Frostball. I really like this, but... Uh, okay, think? okay, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. I'm down. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Candle, Candle beard. beard. All right. Uh, let's go. Okay, so um, <laughs> that that was quite quite cool to listen to there because I think Reynard straight away was very obvious. Like he was t taken in by this this mode, right? He's like, oh, oh, okay, let's have a look at these, and it's like, oh, we get to pick more cards and look at these. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really interesting there to see how he approached it, and they did go for the removal. I think they were a little bit scared of the unknown. Yeah, very true. You know, they looked over the deck, and sure, there's that Doomsayer that they can deny stuff with early, and then there's a Frostbolt and a Fireball. But you know, great spot from them saying, "Hey, if there are some big minions coming out from uh, from these AI opponents, we don't have really good ways to counteract that." And then uh, Reyna calling out as well, "We're not really a tempo deck. It's not like we're going to get ahead of them that often with the minions that we have." So yeah, it seemed like a solid choice. Yeah, Candlebeard does give the minions uh, give his minions charge, and also there are three secrets: Cypher Knight, Venom Strike Trap, and Mana Mine. Teamwork, I like it. So let's uh, listen to Gramsci Grifters and see what they think of the secrets and also how they react to Candlebeard's opening play of Pit Snake. We really have a turn three play, and turn three we can go like Frostbolt missiles, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, power seems fine. Yeah, both plays are good. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think we frostbolt. Yeah. I don't want to take the 50 50. Yep. So, apparentice and frostbolt. Like so, Venom Strike is like a snake trap. Uh huh. When you're minions. Yep. So, what are we going to do here? I like missiles to start. Because I think we play um, it anyway. Because we're going to hero power, right, if it's... Um, how about just playing flame cooler and then missiles, or...? Well, I think we start with missiles. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> this is terrible. Standard. Oh, yeah, unlucky. Standard. All right. I would have just honestly traded the... Uh, sorry, but anyway. Uh, you, just, you just never trade here because... Nah, trading's bad. Yeah, because we get... Um, Oh, iPhone right, right. I and then probably Venom Strike, yeah. so he out text and. Let's play the Farce here, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Going place. I really hope that secret pick was right. I'm still not sure. Uh huh. What were the other options again? Double our life total. Which I thought we'd be at. 20. We're not 30. Yeah. We're 25. I thought well, it would be at 20, double that. Oh, but it's sick. double 25, it's a lot. Alright, let's draw a fireball. Keep it simple. What? <laughs> nah. This is pretty bad. Okay, we're two damage off. Oh, nice. oh yeah. Esports ready. There you go, fireball off the top, bringing it home, but these first two bosses have proven to be very simple. For both of these teams, they're going to dip into another treasure and another loot pack now. So let's see what they want to pick. Yeah, there's a lot of loot that they can actually choose from and a lot of cool decisions that are going to be played out. So let's take a listen. Your minions cost zero this turn. Resummon this minion. I think I like the mugging card, but War Rager is very good too. I don't know. Up to you guys. I like the steel three cards. What do you like, Cranish? Yeah, yeah, three, uh, three cards seems good. This seems so sick, though. I don't know. I. It's only. After I think about it more, I think War Rager. Probably, probably. Um, it's Wax Rager. Yeah, Wax Rager is really good to push damage to the face. Yeah, yeah. I guess. And it's like it, we have no tempo plays. I just don't want to be doing nothing turn three. You know. Um, okay. I think it's yeah, what our yeah, deck yeah. is missing more than value, okay. so that's why I would yeah, take. Yeah, Rager it. seems sick. All right. We're really encouraged to mulligan now, too. So. Um. Hmm. Ooh. Dude, Glyph is so good. Glyph. So is Conjurer, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, is Jaina... How strong is Jaina? I don't know, like... It's just late game. We have Ronin. Yeah, late we have, game. We have yeah, never we been in late game, so... Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah. want to take oh, okay. the tempo I, cards. I like Glyph and Portal way too uh -huh. much. Although the other one had AI, we don't have AI, it's fine. Yeah. 
Yeah. 40 HP. Right. Okay, a cool. few, few conversations there over what, what to take, and they actually went with the Wax Rage. I really like Raynard's approach of what not what isn't best on its own, but what helps the current deck. Yeah, what's interesting to me, though, is he, he was kind of considering that with the treasure he picked, whereas to me, that's the consideration for the loot pack that you get. Like, the cards actually sure. like weigh the overall tempo versus value engine of your deck. I think the treasure is honestly just picking the strongest one, and we've seen very different opinions from the first run to this one, where I think direct competitors, your minions cost one more against secrets, were taken reverse ways, yeah. and then in this uh, this pick as well, exactly the same thing also happened. As well, let's just bear in mind again, we are only doing a three boss run yep. for this. So imagine when you're on like boss seven, boss eight, and you're, you, know, you have to pick the loot going into that, and, and that's what you need for a full run. So these decisions only get harder and harder going into the game. Now against Elder Jari with a hero power, gain three armor, tank up. Yeah. And uh, this is actually one of the interactions that TJ has reliably informed me can be quite difficult. If you are playing Mage, your deck is very burn focused, you don't have a huge amount of minions, and then you're facing out against Elder Yari, who can just gain a bunch of life with one mana tank up over and no, over if again. if you dart trap them. True. <laughs> so that's going to be an easy interaction there. Deal five instead of healing three of her Elder Jari. Let's listen to Crime Christie Grifters and see what they think of this final boss for their first run. Is this, uh, is this standard? Hey. Oh, That's lucky. Yeah. All right. I feel like we're going to get double Wax Razor with Redemption. Hey, this is good. Yeah, I just want to play yeah. him. Twilight, Flame Caller. Flame Caller here. Yeah, I think so. And push some damage. Yeah, I might even crossbolt his face, but that might be wrong. Play around uh -huh. weapons. Nah, it's probably better not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just pass. Just not playing. Yeah. That's so good that we drew War Rager. Okay. Oh. He's gonna infestation us. So what did you play here? Um, you're I gonna like, push ten damage. I like uh, conjurer, a conjurer attack base. I think. Yeah. Yep. Seems good. You want it? I got it. Yeah, easy oh. meteor. Oh, if we take actually if we take breath, we could play it right now and it would protect one of our little dudes. Breath seems fine. We can also honestly I, I wanna take Meteor and yeah. I want to uh, trade the Rager. It's not great. We miss five damage, but I value these guys a decent amount. Um sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Trade Rager and uh, yep. yep. Cool. Yeah, that's a balanced Hearthstone card. The difference between drawing that and not drawing that is gonna decide whether we beat the late game bosses, like the later stages, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh. So this gets gets nothing? Redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. So we have 16, 12. Yeah, we have a little Okay, here. so, um. Raynard continuing to show his knowledge of the rules of yeah. this format, going, oh, you know, help with the late game bosses. It'll be very interesting, but I will say the Wax Rager pick has almost countered this boss on its own. It's true, yeah. One of the big problems about this matchup is it's hard to stick minions with this deck, and that Fireball Frostbolt that they were sat on the whole time doesn't get the job done. So the 5-1 actually ended up being a very, very smart pick from Raynad there. But then we saw the uh, the Gloves of Mugging or whatever yeah. they were called, the Steel 3 cards, be very effective yeah. in the previous run. So you can see different strategies, both very viable. Okay, so the Grime Seek Rifters are still in, uh, in it, and it, they've got 3-0 so far. Are they going to get 9-0? Let's find out soon.
We are here at the Hearthstone Invitational here at BlizzCon. And what would the Hearthstone event be without a tavern? We see a lot of the players and viewers been hanging out there, having a lot of fun, playing a lot of games and enjoying the live music. Is that Hearthstone Battleship? I want to go I play Hearthstone so. Battleship right now. You're on your own. I'm, I'm, I'll be in the tavern if you Okay, need. okay, I got this. We'll, we'll get someone out of the audience here to uh, come and help cast, no doubt. You'd never notice the difference. Pro tip, just put on a British accent and be sarcastic a lot. Very, very easy. But yeah, I actually do still need to get in the Hearthstone Tavern because I haven't got my Nemzi yet. Oh, really? Okay, we need to do that later on. The Giants, the Jungle Giant team, led by Crip Fiber, Jackie, they are 9 0 currently on a boss count, so they have took the maximum amount of victories in this dungeon run format. Can their opponents keep up? They need nine wins as well. They need the maximum. If they lose one, they are done. Can check out how they're going to approach the next run. They've already played Mage. Let's listen to them now. So now it's a bit different. The light shall bring victory. Yeah, yeah, I fine. agree with that. Yeah, this going curve. Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna probably hero power and. This turn is Hearthstone, so Priest doesn't have two mana cards anyway. So. No reason to mull uh, the cultist. What is the hero power? Um, Deal yeah. two damage. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh no. Uh, is it worth it just to draw a card so we can bump it, steal the two one trade? That's bad. Is it anytime it takes damage? Yeah. Um, I don't mind smite trade. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, That's seems fine. fine. Yeah, seems fine. Let me just make sure there isn't something obviously better. I don't want to. No, there really is. Yeah, I feel like potion of many is doing nothing. So. So you think you think smite, right? Yeah. yeah. Right away. Oh, the hero power seems pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Oh, it's actually one of those times where this is better than Talon Priest. Uh huh. Okay, well, I like our chances. Go play it. And that's why you gotta love listening to Raidad sometimes. Just little moments like that. Raid lead yeah. is the board. Yeah, and, I like our chances. And what I do like about it as well is the fact that there was a pause. It's like. Top level Hearthstone players discussing how to be a 10 health mini boss. Yeah. Like, let's just, whoa, let's just wait to see if, in case we've missed anything for the exact best play. And it's like, no, he's dead. They've already downed the first boss. Yeah, the one thing they haven't missed is the lethal on the first boss. Should run through one and two fairly quickly here, but we'll uh, take a listen, see how they're going to set themselves up for number two. So the worried. start of the game, draw two cards. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, for Priest. A cost one more could be good if we're a tempo deck, which honestly, this kind of is a tempo deck. It's a lot of minions. It wants the board. Um, Captured Flag is like drawing Kelseth all the time and not even having to spend a card on it and not getting a two mana 2-2. Two -two. Isn't yeah. this better? I don't know. If, if you're keep pushing for tempo, then... I mean, if you look at the deck list we have, it's very minion heavy. Yeah. I feel like if we draw more cards, it's just gonna increase the odds we have a good curve, but we don't really have like very many yeah, cheap spells. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, anyways, we, we just don't have like enough mana to just play every yeah. stuff, so. So you agree with Captured Flag? Yep. Yeah, yeah, Captured Flag. Yeah, I think it's the best. I mean, Kelsa's broken, so. Uh, Flash Hill. Well. Would it be good? Like. Osric is the only thing making me not want this, but these other two cards are amazing. Um. Yeah, Radiant Elemental and Chris We just need Oracle. two drops so bad, but yeah, I don't know. The Osric like, is just a dead card, so. Yeah. I like Belcher. What's the Shallow Grave Digger? Well, the thing is that, like, I feel like we don't really need heals, and yeah. then we don't really need, like, Death Rail Mania. It's, so. it's definitely not the left one. You, 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 you want to take the middle one, really? I, I, I think like, the right I like one's the right. Oh, yeah. oh, Okay, okay, yeah, yeah sure, sure. So I like Belcher It's a all lot, slow, and... but... It's just full of minions, so yeah, I, I just get it, yeah. Okay. I think if the passive ability works the way I think it does that we got, it'll make the mini slime uh, big, too. Yeah. This healing adventurer was separated from his old party. Okay. 
This guy's gonna heal himself. Great. A lot of choices then, a lot of discussion, but they'd go for like overall the best grouping of cards they thought was relevant there. You know, like the Belcher yeah. and the Oracle, as right. opposed to having the Osric as almost a dead card. And I think plus one, plus one is so powerful in this format. And then also once you've taken that, because your deck size is so small, I believe they're up to 15 cards after picking those additional three, you yeah. just want one drops in your deck, right? So you pick the thing that has a Crystalline Oracle in it because you can mulligan so consistently to hit one into two, and then your one into two is huge because your whole deck has plus one. Plus and also then you're trading off a Sludge Belcher versus an Osrok. It's a nine mana Osrok right. <laughs> versus a five mana Sludge Belcher. There it is already. So we've seen a lot of these early bosses not even get to turns like turn nine. So now we'll see how the Grime Suit Grifters do. It's going to be a Lepanome. So Graves the Cleric uh, can heal for zero mana. It seems like he's playing some very aggressive minions as well. Whoa, look at this high level play from Graves the Cleric. So like Plays around yeah. Potion of Madness. Value trades. Not messing around. Amazing. Graves, uh, definitely at least a legend player. And uh, the, then the guy's just there. Uh, Grouchy Group is just working out exactly like, yes, we can't heal uh, our dragon that's on the board. But let's take a listen and see what they're thinking of Graves the Cleric so far. No, he does it at the beginning of the turn automatically. That's how most adventure bosses do it. So at the beginning of his turn, he's going to trigger this ability every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what do we think about trading? Do we really have to trade? Like I don't think we need to. This is going to, at the beginning of his turn, it's going to go to a 4-5, and then he's going to value trade. Uh, do we care? I don't know. Like Actually, it's possible I he has more healing just because he's like the healing guy, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. we should trade. We sure, should trade. trade, trade here. Do you want a mind blast though? Yeah, it's tempting to go face. I, I, just, I don't think it's 16. right. He's at 16. Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, as you can now see, Graves the Cleric, in fact, does not do it at the start of the turn. Reynard just got debated by the AI in the game. Yeah, the AI just seems to not want to heal if you have injured minions as well, which is honestly terrible. Like, it absolutely should be doing it. There you go, who said casters never talk about misplays. Graves the Cleric is terrible at Hearthstone, confirmed. Uh, it's putting forward a bit of a fight here versus the Grimesy Grifters, though. I think already this is one of the most competitive board stakes we've seen, especially only for a boss number two. For sure, yeah. Grimesy Grifters have to put something together here, but bear in mind, again, due to their treasure they got from beating boss one, they are having plus one, plus one on all of their minions, and suddenly there is two, three drops. This Sludge Belcher may well become immortal at this point. Yeah, and it honestly also doesn't really matter that much. There's 14 health on Graves, and there's a Holy Nova and a Mind Blast available yeah. next turn. So if one damage sticks here and Graves doesn't gain any health, it's over. Let's see what they think about this following turn for Grime Cheat Grifters. See if it's a 2-3. It is. It's passive. So it's like uh, Cavern of Souls. Uh -huh. That's really strong. Easy. Easy. I agree, Mr. Kranich. Gravity Grifters take another win and stay with their chance of going to the finals. Let's see what treasures they're going to pick from boss number two. They take a lot of options, and we'll see what happens. Turn. So, we're Cast gonna... Pyroblast randomly until a hero dies. Wow. I mean, it's good if we have a life lead. I, I like the Boots of Haste. I don't know what you guys yeah, think. Yeah, I don't know, but like we're never gonna cast a ten mana spell. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah sure, I agree sure. with boots of, boots of haste. Oh boots. wow! Two Kalthazads, <laughs> <laughs> three light spawns. Uh, uh, well, it's not the death rattle one. I don't think. I like this. I'm gonna boots of haste these guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> these are like actually castable, but I don't want to. I don't want any of these. I'd rather just not add either, any of these to my deck. So, yeah, we just got Boots of Haste, which means like our minions might get like to be zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we draw it, we're in a very good spot anyway. I'm just thinking, yeah, what yeah, if we yeah, don't yeah. draw it? Then like Light Spawns become the best. Uh, but oh, that's just high roll, right? This is a high stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. like, anyways, we have a lot of mid range minions here, so. It's fine. This ancient Stone Guardian prefers the loot to stay here. All right, well. I would always go with the safer pick, and I probably would have picked the light, the light, light dudes. Ah, uh, the old light dudes. Good old light dudes, yeah. yeah. 
Great cards, and now they are going to be going again to Cracks. Again, Gramsci Crypt has dropped one game. They are done and dusted. They are out. And the Jungle Giants will move on to the finals. Yeah, and these these game threes, the third boss of each player's individual run, these are the real clinch points. These are the ones where you might lose if you know you haven't built your deck smartly going in, or you might lose if the uh, you know opposing boss just gets very lucky against you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Grime Street Grifters got off to a decent start here. They have a Crystalline Oracle to play on curve as a two-two, so they should be able to start running cracks down pretty quickly. And also, captured flag for Grime Street Grifters means that Cracks's hero power kind of put your minions back to where they should have been because sure. it deals one damage to everything and, and they had one more health anyway. So there you go. Our Oracle would have been cleaned up without that captured flag pick. Now it sticks around on the board to jam Ooh. Cabal Talon Priest. Well, and Reynard said, you know what? If we draw Boots of Haste, yeah, everything's probably awesome. Well, guess what, buddy? You drew it. Hang on. Boots of Haste, your minions cost zero this turn. Yes. Why wouldn't you have just played it then? Well, they have two Kel'Thuzads in their deck, is the theory, as well as, you know, Draconid Operatives and so on. just play Sylvanas sure. on turn three. Sure. And a cheeky heal at the same time. They are uh, playing around Fireball Doomsayer. Ah, because we all know Cracks runs Fireball Doomsayer. <laughs> I mean, you can see straight away, right? They drew one more big minion and they're immediately getting oh, yeah. more value out of this than they would have got on the previous turn. Like, there's definitely reasoning for what they did. No, I agree. I just didn't like it. Fine. But we could uh, take a listen to Grime Street Grifters and see what they think of this big push. Is Colin Sentry going to be enough? Oh. Uh, it's not very effective, huh? <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have. So. Nice. Okay, well, that's the lethal. Not the first time we've seen that interaction. Can we teach Cracks the meaning of order lull before this <laughs> releases, please? But yeah, nonetheless, 6 0 start for Tempo Storm in this one. They are in fantastic shape. Remember, they just need to tie the score, which is great because that's the best they can possibly do yep. against the perfect 9-0 from the Jungle Giants. And they are on track to do it yet again. Just Kranich, the man with as much BlizzCon and experience as anyone else, just has to take down a 3-0. And now. let's be honest as well. If I was Kranich, I would start feeling a lot of pressure. Everyone has won all of their games. Do you want to be the person on stage at BlizzCon that loses against one of the first three bosses and loses for your team. And loses to an AI that doesn't realize it should whirlwind after putting extra minions on them. Yeah, Jungle Giants looking still pretty confident, looking still pretty happy with the nine wins, but they know they have done everything they can. It's out of their hands at this point. It's all about what their opponents are going to be able to do here. And if I've kept track of this rightly, it should be Warrior remaining to play for Kranich here, so. which is quite an aggressive deck. It's kind of an early game aggro uh, in Rage Warrior that it starts off as. So you can plow through the first two bosses in two or three turns because of the low HP that they have. Yeah, I think it's important to note as well, Warrior, I saw you play it when we were over at the demo yeah. stage and we've seen it obviously be played out. Seems very, very strong because it's so aggressive, but maybe bosses five, six, seven, you need something more control. So it might be a little bit less straightforward than it seems early on. And maybe if you run into the, you know, the tank up hero power boss that we saw earlier on, then early aggression is enough yeah. to get you there if you don't pick up some extra beef from those loot packs that you gain throughout the run. Yeah. Looks like the Jungle Giants are very focused on, like, okay, Kranich, just lose. <laughs> <laughs> just get beat up by a giant rat. I also do like the Wee Whelp. I believe it's from Scotland. Um, yep. Makes sense. But it uh, looks like they are going to be picking on the only class that is left for this demo for this dungeon run for the team. It is the Warrior find out exactly how the first game is going to look. Let's take a listen in, see what they think of the giant rat. Huh. That's full keep, no. I don't really like the armor smith, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know like what else is in our deck, so... Yeah, we have a game plan. Yeah, sure. That's the first boss, anyway. Uh -huh. I mean, let's see if he's harder than the last... 10 HP. Yeah, still 10-20, still, still same hero power. Is it oh. really? All right, Kranich, do you think you can navigate this hand? It's pretty complicated. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a hard game to play. <laughs> oh, my cards. I'm going to play Armor Smith. Yep. Trait? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I kind of miss Warbot. I feel like he never got the play he deserved. <laughs> yeah, 
he would be actually pretty be good right about now in the meta. Oh. Well. Yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Not a great deal of talking needs going on to play through your one, two, three, four. But actually, I did like the point Raynad said. I don't really know what's in this deck. Once you do learn what's in this deck, you realize with like your ten card starting pack or whatever, you can mulligan for Warbot into Cruel Taskmaster specifically and hit it very, very consistently. It's funny as well, and Raynad again brought the point of ten health because when I first started playing, I didn't even look at my opponent's health, so I was playing like the long game, and then you realize that oh, it's ten health, like. A Corcoran Elite plus one damage spell kind of solo is the boss. So it really is for you to just keep in mind how these bosses work. You're a hunter player, Raven. How do you not look at your opponent's health every because turn? Because it's always at zero. But nonetheless, Raynad and company, Kranich in this case, were keeping an eye on the health. Quick lethal against the giant rat. They've got another pick to talk over now. One. So we'd gain four life for, for hero power. If that was any other class, it would be really good. Yeah, it's not really good in Warrior. Um, yeah, I, I like drawing two cards, honestly. I think it's just better. Yeah, Other, yeah others are just bad. I agree. We yeah, can get sure. our weapon, that's pretty good. We can draw cards. We're probably getting like some nice curve. So. Yeah, we're basically a really bad tempo deck with yep. the Brawl. Uh, oh, are, are pirates good in this deck? Kind of. Pirates seems fine. We have one pirate already. Yeah, and also this is fine. Uh, yeah, Reinforcer is solid. I mean, honestly, it looks like a control card, but Shield Slam is pretty good in aggro just in general anyway. Um, Mount our Armor's just the man. I don't know. I, I like the first or I, the I, third. I, okay, yeah. I, I think I like the first one the best. Yeah, yeah, just Pirates. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The bosses seem bad against uh, good curves, so... Oh, is this, uh, is this a new guy? Yeah, the Frost for... Bulg Warrens feel unnaturally cold. Freezing okay. yeah. effects? Probably. The Hearthstone Stage Warrens feel unnaturally cold. <laughs> oh, for... Okay. Right now feeling unnaturally like cold. And um, he is going to be opening up here. They did choose to go for the Pirates. There was a lot of deliberation. But it all comes back to Smog. Yeah, I agree. Especially when that the actual starting deck like appeared on the right hand side of their screen for the first time. I think when you've got like the Warbot, you see the Warbot, the Amani Berserker, Death the Cruel Taskmaster, Death Spite, etc. I mean, I think my first pack, the first time I played Warrior, had two Frothing Berserkers in it, and I just went, yeah, yes, please, that'll kill some people. So if in doubt, pick the Pirates. Seems good to me. Yeah, and you can see Gramsci Grifters. They did get the artifact of drawing two extra cards on their first turn, and you can see pretty much exactly how they said. Wow, it just means our curve's going to be way better. The deck's still pretty small. Yes. There's a lot of incessant clicking going on right now. I believe that was just Raynard being irritating from the right-hand side. <laughs> pretty much how I play, actually. Between turns, <laughs> I'm spam left clicking and not even on anything, just on the board. To be honest, I do exactly the same thing. <laughs> Warbot trade here, picking up some enrage. There are, uh, enrage, sorry. There are quite a few activators in the deck. As I mentioned, Cruel Taskmaster, you brought up the uh, Death Spite. His ability to pick up Blood Razor again as, uh, yeah, let's listen into Grime Street Grifters and figure out exactly what Raynad is tapping at so incessantly. We just go face, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Oh, no. None of that. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> into the, yeah, for Zerker. Justice. Yes. Uh, easy cork run. Yeah, we're gonna beat him down. And we have lethal in hand, I think. <laughs> Bash and hero <laughs> strike. <Yeah. laughs> Alright, got it done. All right. Okay, got it done. Gramsci Grifters go up to eight bosses down. And Kranich and the team only have one more to do, the final boss, to be able to take this win and go into the finals. Let's see what they're going to pick up here. I still don't like the 10 mana cards. I think just draw three seems... Steal three cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, Pyroblast is kind of good in our deck because I think we're going to be aggressive. Um, but... Yeah, but I don't know, like... I'm on the team. We shouldn't pick that it's card. Scary. That's scary. Like. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary, yeah. And I don't even think we're going to reach um, turn 10 anyways. Uh -huh. So we should just get, yeah, mugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also, like, our, our opponent might get, like, 
um, bigger hairs, I guess. I mean, like, they, they just have, like, more health points than, like, Yeah, they, they might start at 50 yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm down to take gloves. I think it's the only one that makes yeah, gloves. sense. Just wanted to talk about the others and see. Uh-huh. Uh... Well, I like that laugh. Oh, <laughs> let's go. More pirates? That's insane. We got patches. It's the best patches. possible card we could have gotten. Wait, you can draw patches as well. What's that? You can you can draw patches. Ah, uh, don't talk about that. <laughs> Just get it. <laughs> no, 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 it's never happened before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's the same guy. Yeah. All right, all right. So what did Cracks do? He uh, freezes stuff. No, no, it just deals like one damage to all them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good against our enraged deck. Yep. This is Raynad's final destiny, the BlizzCon stage, needing only one more boss to defeat to tie the 9-0 record and to progress through to Grand Finals. He draws patches and loses to the guy who can't play his whirlwinds in the right order. <laughs> I think it's something to consider, though. I think Kranich didn't really finish his point, but he said, oh, we can draw patches. The deck is not because a 30-card deck. Card is so deck. Small, yes. <laughs> it's tiny, so it's very likely that you will draw patches it, based on your mulligan. But looking at this, I think with Gloves of Muggin, Armorsmith and a Cruel Taskmaster, there was a Crime Street could have actually just kept those cards, right? You just can turn one mug in and then go Armorsmith, Taskmaster, and go. I'm They've not been too fearful of the bosses, and also going into, say, Nazos first mate into patches and then cracks just hero powers, well, well then they're just gone. I'm actually not sure. They haven't been explicit in their discussion of Gloves of Mugging. Like we saw from the Jungle Giants, they might not realize you actually oh, steal! There's the patches draw! Kranich was right! Let's take a listen to Grime Street. Go for it, Patches. War Bob. <laughs> no, no War Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear them. Good call, Granich. Yeah, that, that was the reason not to take it. <laughs> it's definitely never yeah. getting pulled out of our deck. Yeah. Armor Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Did we just forget that we pulled two cards every so turn? No, I remember. But yeah, even I, though we pulled two cards, like. It, yeah. yeah. I like Hired Gun. A hired Gun. Yeah. Oh, he just didn't trigger his hero power. Oh, you're okay. Wait, he knows that we have Armor Smith and Enrage. He knows. Oh. Flash. Okay. We've like never playing. gotten our weapon, actually. I like mugging him here. Yeah, just doing some cars. Yep. Ooh, Ooh. frothing. Okay. Oh my gosh, we got Arcanine <laughs> yeah. Reaper. Actually, this is best. Hey, we know what his deck does now. Yeah. It just seems like our cars. Yeah. Ah, another easy turn. Our I team. Yep, yep. And... We play our Dread Corsair, too. Yeah. We're gonna play Dread yeah, Corsair, yeah, 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 as well. Um, yeah. Juicy. Yeah, because our coldest is going to be so good. <laughs> I'll see if he has Sleep of the Fishes. Thank you. Yeah. He probably has it. It should be. It should be. It should be lethal, yeah. No, yeah, Sleep of the Fishes. Oh, yeah, I sleep, mean, sleep. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, okay. oh no. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Well. We're going to have Patches and. Um, yeah, yeah. Curse here. Oh, South Sea and South Sea cultist. Yeah. Okay, sure. It's a good thing Patches was here for moral support. Nope. I think that's really what, what let us win. So we have nine in hand, so lethal if he wipes the board. Uh -huh. Easy. All right. Yeah, isn't he safe today? Just emote him and he one, says one something One last different. boss standing between us and the trophy. There it is. Crime Street Grifters do take the win and take the nine wins and can move on to the finals. Even one of the first teams to explore the emote exchange between the bosses. Yeah, even Patch's draw wasn't enough to slow them down. They did manage to 
put together a pretty sick warrior deck there, it has to be said. Starting off with the aggressive package and then adding two loot packs of pirates then on top of that. They just had way too much damage curving out alongside with that extra card draw that they got from the treasures. But as expected, I would say, having sampled the bosses, 9-0 for both teams, that went in favor of the team who was ahead after day one. The yeah. Grime Street Grifters are going to be our grand finalists. Yeah, and let's hear from them and what they think about going into the finals because they're on there with Frodan. Well, congratulations, Grime Street Grifter. You guys are going to the finals. Now, uh, how, how did you guys feel about the dungeon run? Did you like, enjoy, did you enjoy the experience being able to go through all the bosses? Well, we just didn't really play the demo, so like, it was the first time. And actually, it's pretty cool that we can just make our decks and then like, um, get all the sets from there and then like, um, getting to other bosses and like, it's pretty sick. Yeah. What was your reaction when Cranich said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably draw patches, and then you said it never happens. Now that you've drawn patches for the first time ever in your Hearthstone career, are you reevaluating the game now? Yeah, honestly, I, I was in shock. I mean, I'm known for my good luck, and to, to have that happen was uh, really just a surprising turn of events. But I'm glad I managed to get there despite that. And you're also well-dressed as well. Patra, uh, how excited you are going against the Jungle Giants? They actually were saying some stuff like, oh, yeah, or sorry, the, the Chill Break Crusaders. They were saying, oh, yeah, we really want them to win this face-off because we feel like they're the much easier competition. Oh, wow. Well, I'm happy we get to face them again. The first time we faced them, it was really close, actually. And just we just want to prove to everyone that we're a really strong team and none of you guys believed in us at the start. Right, Prodan? That's right. Well, go ahead. Congratulations. And also, why don't you just wave goodbye to the Jungle Giants who's sitting there in the set, side set, <laughs> being a little sad and moby. Oh, now that Jackie's pretty happy. <laughs> Fair luck next time, Jungle Giants. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. And we'll send it back over to Raven's side on the desk. Right, Frodan.